What is up guys, Rick Hackett here going over the farming guide for Borderlands 2. With the release of the Handsome Collection, a lot of new players are coming into Borderlands 2 and don't want to sift through a ton of different guides. So this one video is going to give you pretty much everything you need for farming and getting the items you want in Borderlands 2. So let's get right into it. The first method is a way to upgrade your weapons and gear. Now it's going to be in the Captain Scarlet's DLC portion of the game. Once you've beaten the Captain Scarlet's campaign, pain you'll kind of spoilers coming up but you'll fight this giant leviathan now once you beat him you can go into a room where there's a ton of lootable chests now the cool thing is us a lot of these chests have skulls on them they're special chests and nothing below blue gear spawns in them so you have an increased chance to get pretty much everything you want and that includes legendary orange weapons and gear now you're only supposed to do this once, but there is a way where you can continue farming this treasure room, getting a shit ton of loot. All you have to do is save and quit, and then just click continue again to restart the game. You're going to start inside the Leviathan's stomach, you run through there, fall out, and you'll see the fight with the Leviathan again. Luckily, you actually don't have to fight him again, and he just dies without firing a shot right in front of you. Now if you go up his arm and then divert your path to the left, you'll kind of encounter an invisible wall. Go to the left like you see me doing and you'll encounter another invisible wall. You kind of have yourself in this invisible corner in between two different walls. Now you'll notice that when you're actually in the corner and you jump, you can just jump normally. But if you move ever so slightly to the left and you jump, your character is going to be prevented from jumping all the way and you just kind of hit a kind of a ceiling and go back down. Somewhere between this kind of a few pixels of an area is the glitch. So basically you just wedge yourself in the corner, kind of slide your thumbstick, uh, you know, left and right, uh, your movement thumbstick so you can kind of kind of wiggle your way into this glitch and then just mash A and B, jump and crouch. Eventually, and it does take some practice to get used to, so the very first time will probably be the longest time, but eventually just kind of wiggling around in this corner and mashing jump and crouch, you're going to notice something happens. While you're jumping, you're suddenly going to be propelled into the air and you'll know that the glitch has been successful. When this happens, let go of everything on your controller and your character will be floating in the air. At this point, all you have to do is continue jumping and you'll know that you jump, but you don't go back down. So just jump up, up higher into the air until you can no longer jump and you're at the top point of this glitch. Once you're at the top and you can no longer jump any higher, all you've got to do is look where I'm looking and then just run straight. You're going to stop running and hover in the middle of the air, I don't know, about a little over half of the way to the wall you're looking at. Again, use this video and my character for reference, but if you look down and to the right, you're going to see a different color, darker rock that is covering over the entrance of the treasure room. You run at this darker rock and you'll notice your character will fall, but hopefully you'll be in a position that you land on this rock. Now once you land on this rock, there's going to be another off-color rock, kind of right in front of you. Again, you'll see in this video exactly where I go. You'll stick your head into here and you'll actually see that you go through this rock, you go through the wall. Then there's going to be two triangular rocks, just run in between them and continue running straight without diverting your course and you will end up in the treasure room. Now from this point, you just loot the treasure room, save and quit, continue, and keep doing it over and over again until you get the desired loot. Now this farming technique is good because it just gives you a general amount of very good gear. It's pretty good if you like want to upgrade your gear before a big boss fight or in between playthroughs of the campaign because you don't always want legendary like gold gear. Sometimes you just want a bunch of good purples to get you a head start into the next thing you're doing and that's what that farming guide is for. Now the next farming technique is specifically to get legendary gold or orange gear. Not to mention it also has the benefit of being a great way to farm pearlescent guns which are the most rare guns in the entire game. 
Now for this farming run, what you're going to have to do is have the Doctor's Orders quest active. This is like absolutely essential and you get this quest when you get sent to the Hyperion Exploitation Preserve by Mordecai in the campaign. Just pop in to see Tannis and she will have this quest. Again, accept it but do not complete it. You have to have it on in the background. Now once you get to the Hyperion Exploitation Preserve, you're going to run through the majority of the map, skipping a lot of enemies until you get to this special room where the farming is actually going to take place. But it's kind of weird to explain because farming takes place along the route. Now what I mean by this is during your route to this actual room where the farming is, there's also going to be opportunities to farm enemies, again, just on the route. Two bosses, Pumon and Tumba, will spawn during this route and they both have a chance to drop their own legendary items. Not to mention that again along this route you do have a chance for tubby enemies to spawn. Tubby enemies have a, a pretty much guaranteed drop of legendary gear. They are probably the best things you can farm. So again, it's important to keep your eyes out for those different things, Pimon, Tumba, and Tubby enemies while you're running along this area to get to this special room where the actual farming, I guess, takes place. Now eventually you will get to kind of the middle of the map, you're going to have to kill two badass elemental skags and then there's going to be a very small room with a Hyperion chest in it and a bunch of boxes in the corner. Because you have the Doctor's Orders quest, opening each one of these boxes will produce a loot midget. Legendary loot midgets have insanely high drop rates for both legendary weapons and gear and pearlescence. Now you are by no means guaranteed legendary or pearlescent drops from these enemies, but the drop rates are high enough that's definitely one of the best places to farm. One last quick tip for this farming method is that if you're kind of a lower level, tubbies have a pretty small chance to spawn. Tubbies mostly spawn uh, on this route when you're pretty high level, I'm talking level 72 or higher. So again, if you're much lower and you're not seeing any tubbies, it might be worth popping in to the Hyperion Exploitation Annex. It's in a DLC arena that is pretty much halfway through the map. Now, if you pop in here and quickly pop out and then run the route as normal, when you save and quit and then come back in, to, because presumably you're going to be doing uh, this farming method uh, again and again by saving and quitting and then just coming back in. Again, if you pop into this arena and then pop back out, you're going to reload here and it'll save you about quite a bit of distance actually uh, of running so you can just get to the actual farming room with the loot midgets quicker each time. Again, I wouldn't recommend doing this if you are higher level because you do want the tubbies to spawn. Alright, so those are two great farming techniques to upgrade your weapons and gear, but what about Iridium? Well, there's an insanely easy and effective way to get Iridium in this game and all you have to do to farm Iridium is to beat the raid bosses that are at the end of the Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep DLC at a lower level. Now what I mean is, you may be level 40, 50, 72, it doesn't matter, but reload your playthrough one and you can actually select when you re reload your character, you can select what playthrough you want. So select the very original playthrough and then go and defeat these bosses. You're going to of course have to accept the quest if you haven't already and travel to the area. But of course you will be a much higher level with presumably much better gear so it will be very very easy to beat these raid bosses. Now yes they're going to drop gear that's way too low a level for you so that's not going to be good but they also drop a shit ton of iridium. Save and quit and keep killing these bosses to net you more iridium than you'll know what to do with. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of conglomerated farming guide. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe and as always have a good day.